Hello, welcome to the Catch On channel. In today's video, we will show that former President Donald Trump landed in Manhattan today for his local court hearing and subsequent indictment. Today was a busy day on the island due to this event, with thousands of people, journalists, and supporters paying close attention to all the developments in this case. If you are new here, please subscribe to our channel, leave a like, and watch this video where I will give you all the details of the indictment of the former president today. Let's go to the video. Donald Trump has been indicted. Here's what happens next. Trump was indicted by a Manhattan grand jury and is scheduled to be arraigned Tuesday afternoon after an investigation into payments made during his 2016 presidential campaign to silence claims of an extramarital sexual encounter. The indictment itself remains sealed for now in the first criminal case ever brought against a former U.S. president. Trump, a Republican who assailed the case Thursday as a Democratic prosecutor's political persecution of a completely innocent person, is expected to turn himself into authorities next week, according to three people familiar with the matter but not authorized to discuss it publicly. The people said the details of a surrender are still being worked out. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg's office said it had contacted Trump's lawyer to coordinate his surrender and arraignment. For any New York defendant, poor or powerful, answering criminal charges means being fingerprinted and photographed, fielding basic questions such as name and birth date, and getting arraigned. All told, defendants are typically detained for at least several hours. There can be differences in where the different steps happen, how long they take, whether handcuffs come out and other particulars. A lot depends on the severity of the case and whether defendants arrange to turn themselves in. But there is no playbook for booking an ex-president with U.S. Secret Service protection. Agents are tasked with the protection of former presidents unless and until they say they don't need it. Trump has kept his detail, so agents would need to be by his side at all times. This would be a unique outlier, said Jeremy Salan, a defense lawyer and former prosecutor in Manhattan. When Trump turns himself in, expect a carefully choreographed and relatively quick process and release without bail, as is common in New York, and with a focus on security. A former president isn't likely to be paraded in cuffs across a sidewalk or through a crowded courthouse hallway, Salen predicts. It's a public forum, but safety is also paramount, he notes. If defendants are notified of an indictment or an impending arrest, they often arrange to turn themselves in. Doing so can smooth the process and strengthen arguments for bail by showing that they aren't evading the case. Former President Donald Trump pleaded not guilty to 34 felony criminal charges of falsifying business records in Manhattan Criminal Court Tuesday afternoon. Trump surrendered and was placed under arrest Tuesday before he was arraigned in a historic and unprecedented court appearance, in which the former president heard the charges against him for the first time. While the arraignment was routine, the case is now poised to linger over Trump's 2024 candidacy as he fights the charges both in court and in public. Prosecutors alleged that Trump sought to undermine the integrity of the 2016 election through a hush money scheme with payments made to women who claimed they had extramarital affairs with Trump. He has denied the affairs. Trump was part of an unlawful plan to suppress negative information, including an illegal payment of $130,000 that was ordered by the defendant to suppress the negative information that would hurt his campaign, prosecutors alleged. Trump repeatedly and fraudulently falsified New York business records to conceal criminal conduct that hid damaging information from the voting public during the 2016 presidential election, according to the charging documents. The indictment returned last week by a grand jury against Trump was unsealed Tuesday and provided the public, and Trump's legal team, with the first details about the specific charges he will face. The indictment was quickly criticized by Trump's Republican allies and even some legal experts raised questions about the case. CNN senior legal analyst Ellie Honig said that prosecutors will have to make their case that Trump committed felonies and not misdemeanors by showing that the falsified records were used to conceal another crime, which was not identified in the indictment. 
One of the complicated legal questions here is in order to bump that up from a misdemeanor to a felony you have to show that those records were falsified to commit some other crime, some second crime, Honig said. You heard the defense lawyers, I think, rightly, complaining about that. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg said at a news conference after the arraignment that the indictment did not specify what laws Trump broke because the law does not so require. Bragg highlighted one law that Trump allegedly broke during the conference, New York State Election Law, what makes it a crime to conspire to promote a candidacy by unlawful means. He also mentioned violations of a federal election law capping contribution limits, the evidence, Bragg said, will be borne out in a public courtroom in downtown Manhattan, he said. Next hearing in December. Trump responded to the judge when directed to do so during the arraignment and made the not guilty plea himself. The former president's voice was measured in the courtroom. He walked in slowly scanning the reporters in the courtroom and looked at the judge when he was speaking. The next in-person hearing date for Trump's case in New York is currently set for December 4. In addition to the indictment, a 13-page statement of facts detailed in plain language how Trump allegedly committed crimes to help him get elected to the White House in 2016. From August 2015 to December 2017, the defendant orchestrated a scheme with others to influence the 2016 presidential election by identifying and purchasing negative information about him to suppress its publication and benefit the defendant's electoral prospects, the statement of facts says. Prosecutors described a catch-and-kill scheme to suppress negative stories about Trump in furtherance of his candidacy for president. Each criminal charge Trump is facing relates to a specific entry among the business records of the Trump Organization, according to the indictment. The Manhattan prosecutors accused Trump of repeatedly causing false entries in the business records. A judge said Monday night that news outlets were not allowed to broadcast the proceedings, rejecting a request from several media organizations, including CNN. Five still photographers, however, were allowed to take pictures of Trump in the courtroom before the hearing begins, while there had been some discussion about Trump speaking to the media while in the courthouse Tuesday, he did not do so. Trump left the courthouse and boarded his plane back to Palm Beach, Florida, where he is expected to speak at an event at Mar-a-Lago Tuesday evening. Trump has consistently denied all wrongdoing and condemned the indictment as political persecution. Some of Trump's comments came to the fore during the arraignment when prosecutors handed the judge a packet of Trump's social media postings and informed the court that Trump was making threats with irresponsible social media posts, specifically citing Trump's sharing of an article that showed a photo of Trump with a baseball bat. Trump's attorneys responded that Trump has First Amendment rights and said that he was expressing his frustration with alleged illegal leaks about the indictment from the district attorney's office. Trump's lawyers also claimed that Trump's social media posts were not threatening. Judge Juan Merchant acknowledged Trump's right to free speech but warned both sides not to incite violence or civil unrest with words or actions. Merchant said that if he was shown more social media posts, he'd have to take a closer look at it. Neither side made a request for a gag order. Bragg's indictment marks the first criminal charges against Trump but it's not the only potential legal trouble in front of the former president, special counsel Jack Smith is still moving forward with an investigation into Trump's role in the January 6, 2021, attack on the Capitol and the handling of classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. And a Fulton County special grand jury has completed its investigation into efforts to overturn the 2020 election in Georgia.